the Packers will have a first and goal. Receiver to the right, Jimmy Graham. Rodgers, quick toss in the flat. Left side, got his man for the end zone. And a touchdown! First and goal podcast on Spreaker.com. And we're now on all your favorite platforms. iHeartRadio, Spotify, CastBox, Google Podcasts, Tumblr, YouTube, and SoundCloud. You can always follow us on Twitter at First and Goal Pod and our Facebook page, facebook.com backslash First and Goal Pod 33. Get money, yeah. Uh huh. Get money, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's Dave. What's going on, everybody? I am excited. Week one. Woo! The rosters are set. I am ready to rock and roll, and I know our guest is. I know Jay is. Let's do this. And welcome, everybody, to tonight. It is not a new episode, so to speak, of the 40. This is the final 53 roster special super show with an all-star crew on tonight. We are going to have several different guests on featuring different teams, and we are starting with the man himself, Dr. Super Bowl, Brandon, for the Bills Welcome, Brandon, and thanks so much for giving us your time tonight to talk about your Bills and their 53-man roster. All I'm going to say is, go Bills! Go Bills! Bubba, Bills! Man, I think you guys are the first team to shock the world today when everyone saw LaShawn McCoy released and everyone just had their jaw on the floor because everyone expected a trade or at least to let him finish out this contract there, but no. Brandon Bean just went, boom! You're out of here, Shady. And I, I love the move, because Devin Singletary looks like he's going to be a beast. Well, that's the hope. Uh, I think that um, his uh, sa- his uh, salary was the biggest uh, decision there for Bean. Yeah, I, I mean, he was earning prime running back money when he's way past his prime. We know that. And it's a really good situation because Shady gets to go on, finish his swan song with another team, maybe try for a Super Bowl with, like, the Chiefs or the Chargers or the Texans, who all are are needy for running backs. But Devin Singletary is even a better situation because of the fact he has one of the best running back teachers in the NFL, fourth on the all-time list, Mr. Frank Gore. Oh, my goodness. I love Frank Gore. That guy is a true professional. He's been doing it forever. He's like uh, he's like the Larry Bird of football. Yes, and yes, very good comparison. He he literally would do special teams if you went out and asked him because he will do anything for the team. Dude, remember uh, remember him at the University of Miami? Yes, sir. I sure do. Man, I love that guy. Then I loved him with the Niners. I love them with the Colts. I love them with the Dolphins, and I love them with the Buffalo Bills. I think you're gonna—he's gonna surprise some people with his production this year. Well, oh, yeah, especially that offensive line he's got. He definitely reminds me of one of those ageless running backs, kind of like a Jerome Bettis type. That his footwork is so good, Brandon. When you watch him, oh, that. Yeah. As he loses his athleticism, his technical skill is just so good, it's able to carry him years beyond his athletic prime, even past his like downfall, so to speak, I guess, in, in a running back terms. It is, like you said, it is beautiful to watch because you don't get to see running backs do that a lot. I really think the last one I can really remember is Jerome Bettis that really was like this. So it is fun to watch a guy still be able to go and and be productive everywhere he goes. He's the consummate professional. I mean, you can't complain about him. He really is. Yeah, he he really is. I mean, off the field, he's a pro's pro. Like, he, he does everything correct. On the field, 
There's nothing but selflessness and just going 100% every single play. And it just it's going to be sad when this guy leaves the league because he provides so much. Like, at his age, he still provides highlights. And that's the crazy thing. You look at other running backs, like Jay just said, like Jerome Bettis. There's not many other older running backs you can compare him to. Here's the thing about the Buffalo Bills running back situation. You're going to have Devin Singletary, who is going to be uh, the guy who gets the most carries this season. Without a doubt. Horse, yep. and, uh, and that's a pattern we've seen over the last few years, haven't we? Where, uh, like, uh, last year it was Chubb and Michelle, and then it was uh, before that. It was and last step before regular season. Valerie will score in there. And then, you know, if you want a good receiving back, you know you got T.J. Yeldon out of Alabama back there who had some very productive uh, seasons with the Jaguars as a receiving back. So you put all three together, and you got LaShawn McCoy in his prime. Yeah, I definitely I like agree. it. Hey, now I just want to ask, overall – from what you can see, and, and we, we can all assume for most teams this is pretty much all set in stone. There's going to be a few more trades and people finding guys that they didn't think were going to get cut and, and so on and so forth. But are you initially excited about how your 53-man roster has shaped out so far, Brandon? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, well, I think I told I might have told you fellas or I've been talking about it a lot recently is how good this defense is. It is, in my opinion, the best defense in the entire AFC. Um, but, you know, up there with maybe the Chargers, when the, when the Chargers are fully healthy, and, and I like the way the Pittsburgh's uh, pass rush has improved, so they'll be a good defense, too. Um, but but from, from front to back, uh, I think it's the best defense in the AFC. Uh, I love the addition of Ed Oliver. Of course, Tremaine Edmonds hits his second season. You have an excellent defensive backfield with White, Hyde, and Poyer. And then um, you got some good edge rushers with uh, Hughes in there, of course. We, we want to see what we're going to get out of Murphy, what we want to get out of Latule. And uh, Milano looks like he's the real deal. So I think on defense, we are set. Now, here's the thing. We got much, much better on offense in the last, uh, last couple of weeks. Uh, when you think about last year, we had no wide receivers, and now we have John Brown and Cole Beasley. Uh, that's a major upgrade. Tight end, you have Tyler Croft and Dawson Knox. That's a big upgrade over Charles Hands of Clay. And then you got the offensive line looks a lot better. And uh, I was just thinking about Josh Allen with a good offensive line, the damage he could do with some weapons. Uh, so, yeah, I'm real excited about this team. I think it's a potential 9-10 uh, win team. Can they win the division? Probably not. But, you know, they're going to be competitive. Gonna... You never know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a negative. It's a, it's a tough one. You're like, hey, you hey, want to tell me. You don't have to be too worried about being the only one excited because I was watching Good Morning Football, uh, or yeah. either that, or it was either that, or it was Total Access. But I believe it was uh, J Rob on there that st- said boldly and definitively, without smiling, several times that the Bills were going to win the AFC East this year and take down. Oh, the Michael Patriots. Robinson. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's who it was. Michael Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. I, mean, I don't think they're going to win the AFC East. I'm going to go out on a limb and pick the Patriots, but I do think the Bills are going to going to be much improved. I think the Jets are much improved too. You know, that safety uh, for the Jets, Jamal Adams, that guy is excellent, isn't he? He could do everything. Oh, he is. He is a fun player to watch defensively. He's going to be a Pro Bowl every year. Well, I yeah. would say he, he has the potential really to be a perennial all pro for a few years because yeah. let's face it, the safety position, it's far and few between the greats and just the above average guys. So I don't think it's too much to say if he can stay healthy and keep his play, there's probably a few more than one all pros in this guy's future. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But you know, Ed Oliver looks like those. a stud, though, through the preseason, too, man. Oh, how God, how yeah. he didn't get drafted higher with all the hype coming out of college, 
I think we saw that he he does he he does live up to the bill so far, so to speak. No well, pun my, intended. My take my take on that is that that this this year's draft will be known as a, a a defensive draft. I mean, there are some real good players that came out in the first round, and almost all of them were defensive players. So, uh, you know, I, I don't blame teams. You know, like for example. Uh, the Jaguars could have gotten that Oliver, but they went with Josh Allen uh, out of Kentucky, and that's a great. That looks like a great football player. Um, I Tampa Bay went with a good, you know, great defensive pick. I thought the Raiders um, surprised some people with their pick, but Terrell's a good player too. So you know, uh, and then uh, I think the 49ers grabbed Bosa. So right, right in the top ten, you got four or five potential Pro Bowlers. So, I got to ask, is there any people that snuck onto the Bills roster that you wanted or didn't want? Oh, that's a good question. Um, happy to see Maurice Alexander make the team. He's going he's gonna to be a, a really good special teamer. Um, I think he just beat out uh, Deion Lacey, who was kind of a good special teamer for the Bills last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like how... Kevin- Kevin Johnson, they grabbed him from the Houston Texans. He had an excellent camp. Uh, Neil uh, beat out Pitts probably for the last um, uh, corner spot. Uh, Dean Marlowe was kind of a surprise to get that last safety position. Again, they went young on almost every decision. They cut Kurt Coleman. They went, uh, they cut Captain, Captain Munderland. Munderland. Yep, Munderland. Yeah. So whoever it seemed like if he was if Bean was on the fence with a guy, he'd take the younger guy. Well, yeah, he's building for the future. I mean, you got to keep your core intact. Yeah. And uh, I was going to tell you, though, uh, before, one thing I will tell you about the AFC East is Miami's going to finish last. I am not. I, I don't think I'm uh, singing any songs out of tune there. <laughs> they just got rid of their stalwart left tackle. They just got rid of their wide receiver number one and gained a bunch of draft picks. Um yeah, they're they're done. I I'm doing the whole tank for Tua system this year. They're gonna tank yeah. for Tua from Bama and or another QB, maybe Justin Herbert. I don't know. He looks good. I watched a little bit of him tonight, and he looked good. But I just can't. Yeah, Miami finished in last place. In that, I think the Jets and the Bills are actually gonna have uh, decent to really good seasons that we didn't expect because of the fact of Allen and Darnold both growing. Yeah. Miami is, is going to trade up for two or, or Herbert. So, you know, um, that says a lot about um, Josh Rosen, you know. Uh, we missed on that kid, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. Every, Packers fans kept saying, we need him as a backup. I'm like, no, we don't. I'm like, Rosen is not the kid. No QBs come out of UCLA since Troy Aikman. You know what I think about Man. Rosen that, that people, I think, missed? Because they got so hung up on Aaron Rodgers hanging out with him and comparing him to Aaron Rodgers and, oh, and yeah. all this stuff, the difference was is this kid never has, never will, and does not now have the enormous chip and competitive drive that Aaron Rodgers oh, yeah. has. And and I that's the problem. He I has the personality think, of color. I don't think the kid really loves yeah. football. And and that's well, you bad know what, at the key you know position. What, you know what uh, might have inspired Packers fans is because Rosen played the best game of his career in Green Bay last year. <laughs> it did us a favor. It got rid of McCarthy. Yeah, I know that was something. Hey, here's one. Here's one for you. You mentioned Troy Aikman. And oh yeah, uh, yeah. He for you know first round draft choice out of UCLA. Mm-hmm. You you know. Um, there was actually a lot of debate among the Cowboy brass over who they were going to pick between UCLA's Troy Aikman and USC's Rodney Peake at the time. I think Ooh, biggest, one of the biggest busts. Rodney Peake, oh my God. Oh, a little bit of a name drop. <laughs> yeah. Brandon, did you watch yeah. that, that Aikman special that was, on, uh, that was on NFL Network the other night? I caught that, and I got sucked yeah, into it because that was a bunch of stuff I never knew about Aikman. And honestly, as a Packer fan and a prominent Cowboy hater, 